Hello, true believers and deviants alike. Whoa. I always feel like a jackass when doing my intros. I can never come up with anything that doesn't make me myself cringe. So I'm just gonna say, fuck Kamed with a sick dick. During my adventure without electricity, I spent most of my time scrolling through Twitter and lurking around the underbelly of that terrible hell site. And I happened upon a couple of videos that piqued my interest. Some real weapons grade horrific shit. So instead of laughing at them during a stream like I normally would do, I'll script all three of them because they're all short videos under three minutes and turn them all into one big response video. Just a lot of hot garbage we're gonna talk about today. This first one is like Romeo and Juliet. Pure romance, just hot, hot, and sweltering. It's the start of the summer holidays, and for this age gap couple, a chance to unwind. He unwinds with a beer after unwinding her restraints. I love camping because uh, it's peace and quiet. A man needs time away from the drudgery of work and FBI surveillance. I'm Andy and I'm 47. I'm a full-time shaved polar bear with a passion for not showering. And I'm Beth and I'm 19. She's 19, her teeth are 119. She got the George Washington grill on dude's dental plan. Their 28 year age gap may make them look like father and daughter, but they are every bit a married couple. You can just hear the urge to walk out in the narrator's voice. Their 28 year age gap may make them look like father and daughter, but they are every bit a, a married I can't do, I can't do this. I can't do it. What the fuck? What kind of fucking degeneracy are you promoting here? Oh, my dearly beloved is going to set up the doghouse. When I get told off, I'll have to go and live in the tent for a bit. Needless to say, it's not a good sign having to carry around a portable doghouse for your consort in case he fucks up. Like pissing her off is such a common occurrence, he needs housing away from her. Andy was originally a friend of Beth's mum and over the years became close to her children too. Yeah, that's normally how predators, I mean, uh, singles find their prey. I, I mean, uh, potential mates. Guys like the Coca-Cola polar bear, they're not on Tinder. They stalk you in your local Walmart. I wonder beside the bottles of Excedrin, which of these spinsters has the sexiest children? We would all like one happy family. Those cups are aspirational, just to let you know. But needless to say- Jesus, did a toddler knock your fucking teeth at- Never mind, stupid question. But once she reached the age of 16, Beth wanted to take their friendship to the next level. The second location. The age doesn't really bother me. It never has done. I don't see him as an old man or my dad or anything like that. Said the chick who fucked a molded baked potato at age 16. He's just sensitive. <gasps> like a big teddy bear. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I'm growing pubic hair. Stop it. I'll have crow's feet and my vagina will sag over time. Stop it. I was concerned what people would think 16, 40, it's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> big gap, and, you know. <laughs> he slid right on past that shit, didn't he? <laughs> 16, four, four, I'm only four. Not a creepy middle-aged chicken liquor. Totally a baby. Wham, mommy, papa. Instead of a dog house, I suggest a, a big house, like the big house prison. However, when Andy realized Beth was serious, he decided to give this controversial relationship a go. So we're still pretending this was all her idea? Like banging a melted cabbage patch doll covered in matted dryer lint was her dream. Oh my days. Right, just leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Getting all aerated with you today. Getting all stressed. That's not gonna work. Is that gonna work? Chill, just chill. Chill. It is what it is. I have. Equality? Parody? In a relationship? Get your well adjusted bullshit out of my face. And once they'd fallen in love, Andy became determined to give Beth everything she had ever wanted. All I had to give her was two dollars and change I found in my car cushion and my big old wobbling tube. It got a bit curved over time and you gotta go vertical just to hop on it, but it works just terrible. This is Timmy, and he's two, and this is Conway, and he's one. 
Oh, children. <laughs> Here are some horrible things we can gather from this. He's nutted inside her many times. He has nutted inside a teenager many times. The gene pool of this life-size gray mole rat is ever widening. And she got preggers when she was 17 by a life-size gray mole rat. This is Timmy and he's two. And this is Conway and he's one. I've always wanted- <laughs> The greasy look on his face! Oh no! <laughs> eh, good thing I wore me good knickers tonight. Eh. I've always wanted to make a family or to have a family. So I just thought Andy would be the perfect one to do so. She looks like worst case scenario Billie Eilish. Years ago, this couple would have ended up on The Maury Show or Dr. Phil. I mean, the girl still would have been exploited by a middle-aged prune, but this behavior still would have been condemned. And then I would have had the chance to hear PewDiePie say, take him to the rage. Thank you, my five, for exposing me to love in its purest form, you fucking monsters. Whoa. Oh my God. Wow, I look like Daniel Radcliffe, but like- You do look like Daniel like Radcliffe. Daniel. Daniel Radcliffe if he went to Japan for the panty dispensers. Daniel Radcliffe, I'm not a male feminist, but I play one on Twitter. Daniel Radcliffe, I stand for zoophilia rights. When Guardian Leviosa. Filters got my boy looking like a perfect storm of Jeffrey Tambor and the mom from the Goonies. That was clearly a joke. <laughs> You're a joke. You're a joke. Yeah, because, because when you're dehumanizing someone, you want to be as polite as possible. Sticking to their preferred pronouns and legally change names. Yeah. We see every day at alarming rates that trans women of color in particular are being attacked for living their truth. That's tragic that, and that's, that's very sad, but um, what the fuck do the Snapchat filters have to do with it? Making transness look like it is something that someone can take on and off. For someone like me, it's seen as insensitive when other people can just do it for fun. Oh, so it's like blackface for trans people. Trans face. This is so stupid. Uh, Miss Albert, can I call you fat? Miss Fat Albert. I'd entertain this demonstration of millennial grade narcissism if you'd give me any examples of transphobia. There's no fucking evidence of any kind of transphobia ever with this app. Where have you seen someone doing this? Swing low, sweet testicles, coming for to make a me whole. This is absolutely not appropriate when people are losing their lives and being hurt every day for just being who they are. I'd understand if this feels Filter was specifically trans related. But it ain't! Aside from being harmless fun, this filter is just another opportunity to show how far we've come technologically. That it's getting so powerful that we can change facial structure or our outward gender identifying appearance. It's awesome stuff! But as always, here comes another depressive clout chasing gravy boat to ruin everyone's fun. I know it's hard living in a free country where the only bit of transphobia worthy of spotlight is Snapchat filters. And with that, I say, step your pussy up, honey. Get a job. Own a business, bitch. Suck a dick. Okay. Of course. Notice how every male with a newt like appearance thinks gender is a social construct. When you have a body neither gender would want, that's your only recourse. <laughs> I thought it appropriate to begin the video with child exploitation and end it with child exploitation. This deserves a more appropriate caption. Be fierce, be yourself, and if anybody bullies you- Throw them hands, instead of being a professional victim on the internet. Vice, named after that squeezing sensation around your skull when you read their articles. I'm going to a drag brunch to meet with the young performers and ask them about the community that they've found with their fellow drag kids. You just witnessed a ruined career. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm crying. <laughs> well, we're gonna start off with a- Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Oh, he looks friendly. Don't mind me. I'm just a simple man fresh from my daily Smurf blowing appointment to watch children prance around in skimpy clothing. I'm scared. Anyone else skeeved out by children being gawked at by crusty 40-year-old sycophants? I spotted a few kids in the audience, all bet restless, as if they don't want to attend a potential child auction. We're in the worst hemisphere of clown world. Bringing kids to a drag kid show is like bringing cows to a steakhouse. It's very considerate of Vice protecting the kids' identities. Almost as if they acknowledge that putting children in the spotlight where they are most vulnerable is irresponsible. You just fall in love with each of them for so many different reasons because they're all really incredible. The fact that these kids are brave enough to do something that is so different hopefully would give other people courage to try. Despite the sewage vices oozing out onto the public, the drag kid trend isn't an exhibition of youthful bravado. Far from it. What it is is an outlet for adult members of the LGBT who never got the chance to freely express themselves as children and rejected fag hags and pedophiles. One way or another, these kids are being exploited. The majority of the audience is old enough to unironically enjoy Seinfeld. Kids in this audience, they are bored, they're restless, they don't give a shit. And look at this chick. Look at her. I, the microwaved Julianne Moore, can finally tell my fellow wine moms that I fraternized with gays. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what's the difference between drag kid shows and pageant shows? Both include parents living vicariously through their children, the monetization of a child's natural drive for fun and adventure, painting up children as slutty circus clowns, and pedophiles. And we all came together at some point in time and said, you know what? I don't think vamping out little girls before they're old enough to cross the street without supervision is okay. And then Fine, but sure enough, fast forward to 2019, we make the same mistake again, and now we have drag kids. Why are we repulsed by one, but hailing the other? Is it the LGBT angle? <laughs> well, yeah. But it's also this generation's expectation to defy gender roles. An expectation solely put on the shoulders of males. For women, breaking the gender binary is like a hobby. It's optional. No one really cares if you do it or not. You're a completed work. Your job is done. You're perfect, whatever. I mean, if you wanted to stretch the binary a bit, you could like shave half your head, dye it all purple, and then oh, look, you don't need to go crazy. But men, they have to change their wardrobe, demeanor, mannerisms. It has to be something drastic to show that you are on the right side of history. White Wipe away the sins of your forefathers with feather boas. Now, I'm not saying that all of these parents are forcing these kids to do drag. Not saying that. I think this drag kid thing is indicative of how much society favors females over males. Little girls, no. They have to have respect for themselves. You take that fucking makeup off, you take those hooker heels off, you don't twerk until you are old enough to do so. Which is a fine message, it's great. Then when little boys do it, it's kind of just brushed off. Who cares? Boys don't need to have respect for themselves because they're not girls. It's okay for boys to be in pageants and hang around drug users and murderers and to dance in the middle of the night at a bar it's okay for them because there is no purity to protect. They may be children, but they're boys first and foremost. Right? I mean, how many times have you seen an article with a 10, 11, 12 year old boy being taken advantage of by his female teacher and gone to the comments section with a bunch of knuckle dragging basement dwelling losers? Oh, I wish that chick was my teacher. This kid's a fucking legend, bro. Or seeing comments, well, well boys are kind of like, they want sex more than girls. So, you know, uh, they penis. What did the boy do to manipulate the situation? I mean, if you wanted it, I mean, <laughs> You have seen it too many times to fucking count. We teach little girls about self-respect, saving yourself to get married, and the purity of children. But are we teaching boys that? No, and I think we need to do a better job of doing that. <sighs> That was a rant I didn't expect to come out of me, but there you go. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Twitter, what are you gonna do? This is trash upon trash upon trash upon trash upon trash. If you like this video, then like it. <laughs> Click the bell icon if you want to be notified for new videos. And if you really, really like my videos, donate to my PayPal or become a patron on Patreon. I'm going to see you guys later and my unicorn store review is still coming out. I swear to God. Tom Ed really threw a monkey wrench in my plans, but bear with me. It's going to get done. Goodbye. And once again, fuck Tom Ed.